And the number one point everyone wants to know is how much that house was per month. And drum roll, please. <laughs> it was a whopping dollars a month. A month? Well, are you are you guys ready? Are you are you ready? Yeah, let's go. Let's go. Hey, let's get one. Let's let's get one big yelling. Hey, everybody, yeah. let's go. Let's go. Oh, yeah. Yeah. yeah, let's go, baby. Welcome back to the It Is What It Is podcast, episode number two, boys. Number two. Number two. It is episode number two, but we are number one in not only the United States, mm -hmm. the world. The country, the galaxy, but we are also number one in the entire nebula. <laughs> no yes. way. The, dude, it's crazy. It's actually going insane. I don't know how you guys are showing this much love, this much support on the podcast. It's absolutely nuts, guys. Honestly, shout out to all you guys that watched the first podcast. You guys blew that up. Mm -hmm. And it's crazy, all the support. You know, I was reading the comments. I mean, let's go, BG. Let's, let's go, go, BG. BG. Was crazy. And other comments as well. And, and I love the support, and that motivates me to create content. And, you know, I think this is going to be a great squad that we have. The, the chemistry between all of us, including Yellow Snow Filming, is just unparalleled. We're almost so natural together. It's, it's crazy. You know why, right? It's that Asian persuasion, baby. I think it is that Asian persuasion. I'm not going to lie. It's definitely a little bit of it. But, boys, should we talk about where we are right now? Where, where are we? The setup looking a little different, a little a little nicer, honestly. Like, boys, we're in Austin, Texas. We're in our, first, our first stop of the 12 City Tour. We're here for about the next month. Not even too sure where we're going next. But we're going to enjoy our time here in Austin, Texas, baby. So episode number one, we filmed at home. Episode number two, we're up here. New setup, new crib, but we got something let's crazy get, to talk about. Let's get right into it. We hinted at it last episode, and this is the episode where we're going to be breaking down in detail, every single detail, what happened in LA, what went wrong, why we moved out, all the questions that you guys have, and Brandon doesn't even really know the full story, so let's just Dude, get into yeah, it. And, and you guys uh, kind of told me a little bit, uh, the video you posted kind of explained a little bit of it, but you didn't go too much into it, detail. It was, it was just a little taste. It rats, was just a rats, little rats. That's all I hear. Every time I think about LA, I hear rats, rats, rats. Yo, you take it away, Ricky. Rats, bro. Rats were probably the number one reason of why we left LA. Because when we moved in there, it was it was it was already it was already starting to get infested with rats. But as it kept going, more rats infiltrated. And by the time we ended up leaving, we probably caught up to thirty to forty rats. Literally, it became almost a rat infestation. <laughs> wait, let me, wait, wait. Let me ask you a question. So. When you first got there, did you see any rats? Like, how long did it take until you were like, yo, we have rats in the house? Like, it's a problem. Like, okay, so first we got there and we saw the house. When we first saw the house, I'm just going to be honest. We saw the house and it wasn't like the nicest house, the most modern. Like, the house we're staying in right now. It's so nice. It's so a, modern. It's so, so nice. So, so clean. So modern. So new. It feels very clean in here. Like, uh, this is a house that I could live in. The house in LA, I'm just going to be honest, when we got there, it was very, it was dark, like we said. Old. Old, old, very old. It gave me medieval castle vibes. Yeah, like mid-century. From the first day we were there. Because before we moved in there, I don't know if you guys know this, we did not see the house before we moved in there. We kind of just moved just in pictures? there. Just pictures? Did you see pictures of it? We saw pictures. A couple, though. But it doesn't really do it justice of the medieval vibes it was given off. <laughs> That's crazy that we moved across the country for the first time in our lives without even looking at the house. We literally just trusted Jack and the realtor, and we were like, all right, let's go. But about the rats, we didn't see any rats really when we first moved in there. Then a couple weeks go by, and... There was little rat droppings. Yo, so yeah, when was your first experience when you were like, you might have seen, you were like, yo, there's a rat, there's I'll, a rat, there's a rat. I'll talk about my first experience. I'll talk about, I went downstairs in the morning after I woke up in the kitchen and no joke, I see one rat go, <laughs> runs across the floor, runs across the floor. Yo, wait, under, one more time, what did he do? He went, <laughs> He, he literally ran across the floor like he was like charging at something. Then he ducks under the vent, and then you see a couple more go, 
and then they run under it. And we literally have the clip. Pop up the clip if you're watching on YouTube right now. You can see the rats crawling under. So many. If you're listening on Spotify, you can't see it. So check out the YouTube version because we're on YouTube, Spotify, all platforms. But And let me tell you about my first experience because my first experience seeing a rat I didn't even know it was a rat. I thought I was tripping. We were all just chilling in the dining room. And then all of a sudden, I see something, a dark figure scurry from under the fridge <laughs> no, to, to the oven. From under the fridge to the oven. And then I look at everyone else in the room. I'm like, yo, did y'all see that? Did y'all just see something go from under the fridge to under the oven? They're like, what are you talking about? What are you talking about? But luckily, there was one person that also saw it, so I knew I wasn't going crazy. And then I didn't know it was a rat. I thought we were both just tripping. And then come to find out, a couple weeks later, we catch the rats on camera. No. We yeah, we had a security. Them, bro. We had a security camera in the corner of the kitchen, and we checked back the footage, and you could see five to six to seven rats at a time sometimes. So we started placing out traps. Shout out Jack Doherty. Shout he out. placed so many traps. Every morning he woke up, he would catch a minimum two to three rats. And one morning he even said, I think he caught maybe seven. There was like- Seven rats? It was one th- morning. Bro, I think that was the most- There was three on one trap. Like pop up three the picture. Three rats. You could see it. Oh, three three rats, rats on one trap. It was, yes, it was like bro. a kill streak. It was like Call of Duty. Like he was getting UAV inbound. He was getting <laughs> kill streaks. He got that UAV, that care package. He was almost up to the sentry gun. He may have even got the sentry what gun. What was his KD he, after all that? His KD was... After all the rats. I think it was 30, 35 and 0 probably. 35 and 0. Just for Jack. 35 rats on... Uh, yeah. So he goes downstairs. He said he saw one, two, three rats on the traps. And then he opens a cabinet where he put another trap. Boom, two Dude, more in there. I don't even know how they get in the cabinet because on the floor, yeah, I understand the rats are on the floor, but how are they getting into the cabinet that's Dude, at rat, eye level? Rats are smart. You think they're not? They yeah, just be th- crawling at it, getting into the, all that. They, they'd be like, I've never seen a rat do that. I've never seen a rat do that. I'd be like this, yo, look at that rat. And then also, just in all of the drawers, in me and Ricky's cabinet with all of our food in it, we would just see little, little droppings. Little turds up in there. Like when me and Ricky went back to LA the past, like a oh couple weeks ago to pack all of our stuff up. Dude, I opened, I opened that cabinet and this is the first time I've opened it in probably about a month and a half. Dropping, dropping. Duke, everywhere. Dookies. Turds You look like everywhere. I was in Dookie University. Dude, that's honestly like crazy to me that, that there were so many rats. Bro, tell them about in the air vent in your room. Oh my, no, no. The air vent in my room. So in my room, I thought it was safe because Morgan and I kept our room so clean. Shout out Morgan. She kept it so nice, so just pristine. And somehow the rats were infiltrating our room. So one, one day, I'm just sitting there chilling. And then I see a little thing hanging out of the vent. I'm like, wait, <laughs> what is that? Is that like a little piece of like dirt? Is it, it, is it a little piece of like fuzz? I didn't know what it was. And then I start filming it, and it goes, and it zooms back up in the vent. You could see its tail go. I think we have a video of it, too. Literally, Literally, the tail is sticking out of the vent, and then it just sucks it back into the vent. And, bro, rat poop? Rat poop can mess you up. The Dude. Bu- the bubonic plague. The bu- bro, well, it's crazy because every time I kind of, like, talk to you guys and be like, yo, how are you doing? I get, I, like, maybe FaceTime you guys, call you guys, and you'd be like, Maybe in bed, bro. I'm sick, dude. I'm like, bro. We were why? sick the whole time. You guys we were, were sick so much. We out were there. so sick in LA. Literally, me personally, from the time I moved out to LA with Ricky to the time we moved out of LA, I was sick. And I honestly think part of it may have been that the rats were in the air vents. Because yeah. if the rats are pooping in the air vents, that poop air is just <sighs> going just- through the house. And the bubonic plague was started from plague. rats. <laughs> the black plague. The deadliest plague of all time started from rats. Killed, I don't even yeah. know how many, hundreds of millions of people from rats. And we were living with probably hundreds, if I'm, if I'm being honest. Hundreds. If, you if, think a hundred? Bro, oh, if, easily. 30, if 30 rats were caught by Jack and us. How I'm, many were not caught? How many were not caught? Because I'm imagining more were not caught than caught. Yeah. It's and bad. I, and uh, it's a known thing, apparently. We didn't know until we did some research. Beverly Hills has a rat problem. Which is crazy, because when you hear Beverly Hills, what do you think of? I think of Lug- bougie luxurious, and being rich, honestly. Like, quality, exactly. nice. You think of everything being, like, the best of the best. Yeah, it's like that song, Beverly Hills. What's, what's the zip code? 
90210. 90210. Yeah. How many? That's in so many songs. It's, so the, much. it's the bougie part. It's the, like LA's bougie, and then Beverly Hills is the bougie bougie. Little do they know. Little do they it's know. Rat Central. They got rats doing what? They got rats doing backflips. <laughs> <laughs> Yo. But honestly, that was probably the biggest reason of why we moved. For everyone, out. I would say. For everyone. Going into the next thing, one of the biggest reasons why I didn't like it is because overall, I just felt unhappy there, if I'm being honest. More so me than Nick or anything. I I got a question because I think this pertains to why you're feeling unhappy. Didn't really pertain to me as much, but we were living in a house. It was all boys. It was me, Jack, his cameraman, Mm -hmm. you, and then your girlfriend, Morgan. Living with a girlfriend in a house of all boys, I feel like... It would just be, it's a little, it's a different dynamic. It was so, it was so, back home. it was so different because it was so chaotic. I would go downstairs, we'd be filming the craziest videos. Then I go upstairs and there's no time for my mind to switch from film mode to like girl, boyfriend mode. Mm-hmm. So we're all doing crazy stuff, literally filming some of the craziest videos ever. Go like yelling. Everyone's like, oh, it's all hectic downstairs. And I go upstairs and I have to say, hey, baby. And like try to be sweet with her. What's up? But my mind is still on, <laughs> you know, my mind is still on. We just filmed this crazy prank outside her ding dong ditch ghillie suits. And it's so hard for my mind to switch so quickly. And it definitely affected not only my relationship with her, but my relationship with myself. I, I, I didn't feel like myself out there. Uh, LA is a beautiful place. The weather's amazing. There's so much stuff to do. Mm-hmm. But myself, I didn't feel like myself when I was out there. And it started to affect my happiness. I would, I would go to Nick's room and I'd be like, I bro. Could tell. I, I was just stressing out so much when I was out there. Bro, there were times when Ricky would just come into my room and then just literally rant and complain. And like, it was negative. Like, you were being negative. And, I'm, and you guys know, I'm one of the most, po- I would say I'm one of the most positive people. Definitely. And right? I'm- yeah, dude, honestly. But it's crazy because... Like negativity to a point. If if Ricky was doing it, was he doing it a lot or to the point? Because it does it can rub off on people. Towards the end of it, yes, and it was towards rubbing off on me. And towards the end of our stay in LA, he would come into my room so much just to pretty much rant to me. And there was a couple times where I was like, "Bro, I'm sorry, bro, but you you got to get out of my room. You can't really, be- yeah, you, yeah, 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 like, yeah, yo, dude, stop." Because like, I- he would say the same thing over and over, and I I could definitely tell it was affecting him. But but again, if he wasn't so adamant adamant about being negative about it about like pushing us out he 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 definitely pushed us to move out and i think i i brought up the idea and i talked about doing something with more of the boys instead of like jack and his filmer and more like a squad based around us but then ricky really pushed it to make it happen if i wasn't as adamant and i wasn't like saying yo we need to get out we need to start doing our own thing because i don't see this working out long term we would probably still be there right now if i'm being honest yeah i was just every day figuring out what can what how do we move forward how does jack move forward how does everyone move forward in kind of the best way possible Mm -hmm. but it affected me so much because every day i was waking up and i and i knew I wasn't supposed to be there. And you probably kind of knew, like, what was going to happen, like, throughout the day. Because you, you might have probably kind of had, like, the same day. Well, also, like, it's not like, motivating when you start o- start your day off. Like, how you start your day off can affect the whole entire day. I oh, wake yeah. up in the morning. I go downstairs just trying to cook some breakfast. And I see rat poop everywhere. It just starts off so bad. And, bro, not even seeing the rat poop, probably even worse, was the smell. No. Smell- bro, if rats are pooping, they got to pee, too. <laughs> That's that's bad. And you could smell you could smell piss. It smelled like like kind of like rat piss. Bro, let me ask you one thing, Ricky. So you were in LA, and if I'm not wrong or mistaken, so you kind of were in Florida, and you you've kind of only lived with Nick and your family for a while. Yeah. So that was moving to LA was your first time with roommates in a way, right? Yeah. yeah first time it with was roommates for, for both of us. Because for me, because I went to college for four years, so when I went to college when I had my first roommate, it was a random roommate. I signed up for a ram- random assignment. So I had no, I, it could have been a person that I vied with or somebody that I completely like hated and I had to do a yeah. whole year of schooling with them. And imagine like you're in a dorm and it's like, I don't know, like 15, 20 by 20, like room. So it's 20 by 20 room, you share a bathroom and then it's another 20 by 20 room. So two people here, two people here, and then you guys all share the bathroom. So if you're not clicking well, it's going to be a long it's year. Tough. But so how would you kind of explain like the roommate situation? Because for me, I was lucky to have a roommate that I liked, and I got along with him for a whole year, and we're still friends that's, till today. That's yeah, something so. I d- I didn't even really think about living with roommates and how different it is. 
Because if you've never lived with roommates, you think it's just, it's going to be all fine and dandy, kind of. That's what I was thinking. Were you yeah, thinking yeah, that? Yeah, I kind of thought everyone's a grinder. Jack Doherty, he grinds. That's one thing I got to say about that kid. He grinds. So I thought it would just be like, he does his thing, we do our thing. But as you live with someone, you realize you're living in the same house all the time. So if he's having people over late at night mm -hmm. and you're trying to go to bed, say you wake up, they wake up at different times. It just... That would happen, that would happen a lot because... I'm glad where I stayed in that house in LA, I had like a guest house in the backyard, detached from the rest of the house, mm -hmm. which I was glad. I was super glad I got that room because there was times when Jack, he would be filming, he'd have people over, whether it was just to hang out or film or whatever, but almost all hours in the day, there'd be random people in the house that I didn't know, but Jack was filming with them. And, and it's kind of his right to have it in yeah, the, it, like everyone has to use the house. But it wasn't always just like we weren't always vibing. Yeah, and he was not doing, that we weren't friends, but yeah. it was just like oh, they're there. Everyone's kind of there, and that would definitely throw it off a little bit. Cause say it's like seven o'clock at night, I'm trying to go into the kitchen in the main house and just grab me a little bite to eat. But then there's five random people in the kitchen. That would happen they're, a lot. They're all chilling, which would happen a lot. Yeah. Happened a and lot. And you kind of like don't want to go out. You're just like, it, it's just like five people and you're kind of like walking out. It's just like, kind of awkward. I don't want to have to say hi and meet five new people when really I just want to go in the kitchen, grab me a little snack and go back to my room. Dude, yeah. Yeah. And, and there's like kind of like a saying. It's like a saying, but it's like when you're friends with somebody, you don't really see their true colors until you live with them. Dang. So there, sometimes, sometimes... If you're best friends, even if you're best friends with somebody and you guys hang out all the time, but once you live together, you really see how they live. Like if they're if they're dirty, mm. if they clean up after themselves, Ooh. they're they're true. Because anyone anyone can say anything. Yeah, yeah, and 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 actions speak louder than words. Actions We've been are saying that the last couple days. Actions are the only thing that speak. Yeah, Quote actions that. are the that, that right yo, there. yo yo. Actions are the only thing that speak. This means nothing. This means something. But, but the boys, we're on a podcast, so, so we got to speak. We got to speak. Because speaking yeah. is doing technically right now. Exactly. But like you were saying about the roommates, I can already tell with you, bro. You're a slob, and I don't know if we're going to make yeah, it bro, through the rest guy, of the year. Yeah, bro, this guy, he literally bro. just poops everywhere, leaves it on the ground. I'm, 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 I'm playing, I'm playing, I'm playing. I'm playing, I'm playing. We all get along really well. Well, I mean, it's only been a day. <laughs> yeah, it's only been a day. <laughs> <laughs> it's literally been a day, bro. We slept here last night, and this is the first morning. But I'm just saying, so far. So far, everyone's vibing really well, and if we can keep it going, then it's going to be crazy. It's going to be good. It's going to be crazy. I feel like we're on for a good ride. We are. We're all very- To the moon. Yeah. Dude, I'm telling you, it's, it's, it's the Asian connection. It is all. what it is. It is what it is. All right, moving on to the next point. So we got the rats, and then we Me, got Ricky, his personal issue. Yeah. Per Let me ask you guys a couple questions then. Oh. Okay. What was kind of like your intentions on going out to LA? Okay, so this, I wanted to make a whole video on it, but we never ended up making the video. Hmm. But kind of like what we said last podcast, if you listen to it, we talked about how back home, we did almost everything that we could think of at home. We went to all the cool places, all the Walmarts. How many times have we gone to the world's biggest McDonald's? Because it's, it's like something that's nearby and... We feel like we did everything around there, and there was just nothing new. When you guys walked into the Walmart, kind of everybody already kind of knew what you guys were doing. Too. Yeah, bro, like, and the faces were so familiar, like back home. Yeah, the Target, the main Target by our house, is literally the one that we spent the night in. And w if we if we film something else there, it, just a weird feeling. You just use it so much, and the best comparison, like I said in the first podcast, is you milk the cow dry. Mm -hmm. You milk the cow dry, and then LA. It was a breath of fresh air. It was a breath of fresh air. A lot of new possibilities. A lot of people to meet out there. A lot of networking opportunities. And we thought it was going to be easier to film collabs out there too. Which was also part of the reason we moved out there. But when you move out there, you realize everyone's kind of busy doing their own thing. And they each got their own network. They have their own circle. And they'll do stuff with their circle. And if there's any extra time, they'll yeah. kind of be like, all right, let's do something. Which I realized you can just, now that we know a lot of the people out there, we can call them and set up like a time for a collab, which would what we have to do if we were living there anyway. So we could just 
fly to LA, fly there for a week, set up something to do every single day, like Monday, Tuesday, Friday, have something to do every single day. Or just do this Airbnb idea and stay out there for a month and, and do the same thing. And just collab with the people that are in that city, then move to the next and move to the next. That's why this idea is so good. So But I wanna key. get I wanna get to the next point. I wanna get to the next point the of next point why of- we moved out. Because it's probably one of the biggest reasons as well. Definitely. And one that I know you guys wanna know about, and that is the money situation. Ooh, ooh. Because if I was a kid listening, whenever I would listen to anything, watch videos, I wished that my favorite YouTubers would always talk about the details, the business side, the money side. But they're always it's always taboo. Like, oh, I can't talk about it. I can't talk yeah. about it. But we're, we're on the It Is What It Is podcast. We're going to leave it all out there. Because it, it is, is what it is. is. And the number one point everyone wants to know is how much that house was per month. And drum roll, please. <laughs> It was a whopping $23,500 a month. A month? A month. Just for the rent. And on top of that, the water bill was a couple thousand. The electricity bill was a couple thousand. So we were paying about $30,000 a month. Close to $30,000. Bro, you're telling me you paid $30,000 a month and the rats live for free? Yeah. That's what we're saying, bro. If we're paying... If we're paying $30,000 a month to live in a place, it's got to be the best of the best. You want everything to be nice, pristine. You don't want to have to worry about rats. I had so many spiders in my room. Just the the, the filters on the AC were uh, not the best. I had dust in my room. It was just... And it wasn't the ideal house. Like, this house is way better, and it's so much less. So much less. And... And then we get to go to another new house and experience something new. $30,000 a month. Close. That's how much we were paying. Close to $30,000 a month. And me and Ricky were paying two-thirds of that. By so, the end. so like close to $20,000 every single month. And that's kind of why we moved out. We were looking at that and we're like, yo, we have this many more months on the lease. We could either finish it off and pay all of these months or we could... We could bite the bullet a little bit because it would cost a fee to move out. Yeah, that's, yeah. that's kind of what I want to talk about. It like, wasn't. It, e- speaking of a lease, like, were you tied in to how long were you guys supposed to stay there for, and was it hard getting out of the lease to Ooh. do this? Like, can we talk about? I don't that? know. Or, we can talk. We can, can talk we? about yeah, it. Yeah, we can talk about yeah, it. Yeah. So it was. It was supposed to originally be a one-year lease, but Nick and I didn't even go out the first month because he was boxing. So we were only supposed to be there for eleven months. Shout out one and zero. NCK. Yes, sir. One and oh. (laughs) So we were supposed to be there for 11 months. So we moved out there. January, February, March. August. Yes. We stayed there August, September, October. And you guys don't even know this. We left during November. But we were still paying rent for November and December. So five times 20,000. That's 100K. That's 100K. That's 100K. Not only that. They also got to keep our security deposit, which is another additional month's rent from each of us. So it was upwards of $120,000 we paid just to stay there for like two and a half months. Literally crazy, bro. So crazy. We stayed there for about two and a half months and ended up paying about $120,000, all expenses included, utilities, water bill, everything. $120K to be sharing the place with a bunch of rats from Ratatouille. And just to sleep there, we weren't even, we barely yeah. filmed in the house. It was a, this is another, it was point. almost a thousand dollars a night just to sleep there. What a waste. Which, if you think about that, it's gonna be mad just to think about how much we spent <laughs> That's and wasted. insane. When we were living out there, me and Ricky and even Jack too, he knew it was expensive, but we would talk about, we were like, yo, this place is so expensive. And we were trying to find a sponsor for the house and we were gonna do the whole Buds podcast. But then when that fell through, we kind of just sat there and we had to suck it up of what reality was and that we were paying 30 bands all collectively every single month to stay there. And when, when you hear that, it's just kind of, you break it down, $30,000 a month, $1,000 every single day. You think about what can you do with $1,000 a day? You could, you could to- literally fly almost not anywhere in the world, but Pretty much anywhere in the entire U.S., that's a round trip every single day. How much stuff could you be seeing for a thousand dollars a day? Oh how, my! How so many? You could, be, how, you could so be living nice. How many Chipotle bowls could you get with thirty thousand dollars? 
I don't even know. A probably lot. like Bro, 10, so 10,000. Many. So many. Yeah, but probably about 10,000. Crazy. Uh, if you're getting extra meat, then. And guac, too. So and maybe about 5,000. Yeah. yeah, 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 yeah. But crazy, bro. And I, it was making me, that's another reason why I was getting so upset there. I was like, whoa, we're going to be paying like close to $20,000 a month, just me and Nick, every month. And I was like, bro, this is not good. This is not key. And once you realize that, you kind of you kind of think and you just sit there and you're like, dang, man. This was the biggest mistake of our life. But you live and you learn. You live and you learn. And that is the crucial part. If we let this overcome us and we let the rats get into us and we- <laughs> Oh, they did get into us. They did. I'm kind of, but- I'm kind of sick though. Yeah, I think I'm kind of getting sick from your plague that you're giving me. <laughs> <laughs> but if you if you really let that like creep in, you're like, oh my, we're paying this much a month. The rats are here. I'm not happy. All this, you can let it affect you. And we could have gone back home to Florida and been sad and be like, wow, we failed. It didn't work. Go back to what we were doing. Or you can use that as motivation and put it in something new, a new passion, which is this podcast and this team. Exactly. Yeah. And that's kind of something really big that you, when we talked about this plan, you, you guys kind of told me basically it took us to do this mm-hmm. to realize, dang, it wasn't for us. And I think that's yeah. something to talk about in, in a life, like just to like anybody's life is you never know how it's going to be until you try it. And mm-hmm. if you never try mm-hmm. it, you'll never know if it's a fail or a success. So true. It's, that's kind of the, so true. the situation I'm in, you know, and I'm, t- I'm trying something new in life. I don't know if it's going to work out for me or if I completely fail. But whether or not I succeed or I fail... I learn from this lesson yes. and I gain the experience yes, sir. and I can put that towards something else in my life that somebody else might not have done. You know, and it kind of gives me a little advantage in a way. Yeah, for sure. That's what, that's the whole line. Two L's make a dub. Two L's make a dub because we, we, we were learning. We're really, it's not a loss. It's, it's only a loss. If you make it a loss, if we went back home and we were all sad and depressed and we're like, damn, we spent $120,000 to get sick and live with a bunch of rats for a couple months and you just sit there and then we be unproductive and don't do anything, that's an L. But if you take what you learn into the next thing, mm-hmm. like we're taking it into this. We were telling you, we're like, yo, we don't want it to go this way. And we applied all these things that we learned from our previous situation into this situation so the same things won't happen again. Because if we didn't learn from it, the same thing would happen again here. And it's just a, a cycle. If you if you never learn from it, like you can take L's and keep taking yeah, L's then it's just and L's. not learn from them. That's but true. I'm telling you, if you take an L, use that to learn and say, hey, I just took this L and be proud of, like in a way, be proud of taking the L and say, I'm going to use this to, to make a change in my life and say, I will never take that L again. And, and from that L, you're going to be like, I will never do that again. And I will succeed after that L. And that's kind of how I feel after taking, you know what I'm saying? For sure. Yo, and, ta- and taking an L is much better than taking nothing. I'd rather take an L and learn than not take anything. They, they say you learn more from your mistakes. And I think that's true. Because if you do it right and you succeed, then you don't, you don't really you don't really learn that much. But if you fail, then you realize, all right, what went wrong in this situation? How can I use what I learned for the next situation so it doesn't happen again? And one thing I like what BG said so much is it took us going out there for us to realize and want to do this. And it, it, you realized it wasn't your scene, basically, kind of. Because we could have we could have done this before we went to LA. We could have. We, we were at home. We could have asked Yellow Snow. We could have asked Brandon, yo, do you want to go? Do you want to travel the country in Airbnbs? But we didn't because we didn't think that. We didn't even think of it. And this going out there opened our mind and realized, yo, if we're doing on spending all this money, why don't we spend it on a team and building something that we want together? And we wouldn't have done that before because if we would have, we would have, but, but we didn't. And then also think of the perspective of that. So you basically said, if you didn't go out to LA, this might not have happened. So imagine if you didn't go to LA to realize like, yo, this isn't my scene, we would not probably be in Austin right nope. now. We, we literally went. won't be talking to you. <laughs> we, would, uh, we, we would probably be at home doing the same thing. Because we weren't in that mindset. So that's also another reason why we originally moved out to LA is Jack was the one kind of orchestrating, organizing, and talking to the realtor, getting the house and everything ready to move out to LA. It was kind of like, it was a way to go out without me and Ricky having to think about it and sit down as much. It was a way out of our hometown into a new environment that me and Ricky, 
wouldn't have done on our own. Because everyone at home, Rohan pretty much stopped filming YouTube videos. Everyone stopped. So there was no one like-minded like us, I would say. Mm -hmm. No one was on the same path. When in LA, everyone is doing social media. Jack was motivating. Everyone was like saying, let's go do this. Let's go do this. And at home, there was none of that. It was Nick and I motivating ourselves every day to be like, all right, pick up the camera. Let's film this vid. Let's do it. And besides really DJ Fab, mm -hmm. yeah, there was almost no one else. No one else that we really filmed with. Yeah. yeah. We're just kind of Especially towards ready. the last like month or two. Which I think LA gets a lot of hate and a lot of crap on. They just, there's just a lot of crap on LA. Speaking of crap, I do have to go take a crap. So I'll be right back. But I have to. I have to. Are you for real? I'm sorry, boys. I have to. Are we going to pause yeah, or are we cut, just going to keep it going? We'll cut. We'll cut. Keep it going. Keep it going? Keep it going? Yeah. yeah. All right, Brandon. Bro, you're gonna crap? How long is that gonna be? Nah, nah, cause I gotta pee too. I gotta pee too. Yeah. Let's let's do a little a uh, little pee break and we'll be right back. Wait, the we'll be right back after. Wait, we'll be right back after the commercial break. Yo, guys, everybody, check out IBP merch, the hottest merch in the game. Fire. Available Fire. link in description or at ibpmerch.com, and we will be back to you after, and we will, and we will get back to your regularly scheduled program. Alright, let's get back into it. I finished taking my crap. It was a nice I, I relieved a lot of uh, too much too much detail. <laughs> okay, okay. You, I don't yeah, need yeah, to know. Bro, I don't need to know. Sure. Let's get back into it. So you know the quote, everything happens for a reason. Mm -hmm. Do you guys believe strongly in that? I believe that you can say everything happens for a reason, but that doesn't mean just sit back and let stuff happen because, to you. Because yeah, you can make stuff happen. Like, that's yeah. what I'm saying. Yep. You, yep. Like your your motives and your decisions, your choices kind of leads to what happens. So yeah. Yeah. does everything happen for a reason? Uh, I think it happens for a reason, but it kind of depends on like what you do. You gotta make you it happen. You, you can't just sit in your room and be and go like everything happens for a reason. I feel and like just hope everything money falls out of the sky <laughs> and uh, someone comes in the room and it's like, oh, I love you. But I feel like some people use that to their advantage or as an excuse, say, oh, everything happens for a reason. Oh, I'm and not gonna I'm not gonna get a job because if it was meant to be, it would be meant to be. That's what I'm saying. Yeah, and, and, and that comes into like when you. In a way, if you fail at something and you use that quote to say, well, it happened for a reason, but did it happen for a reason or did it happen because Bro. you didn't put 110% <laughs> effort in? You know what I'm saying? Let me tell you a little story. So there's a little story. There was a hurricane in a town, all right? I got the sound effects. Okay, so there was a hurricane in a town and there was flooding. There was water everywhere. And this, this guy got, this guy got stranded in his house. He was stuck in his house and he had nowhere to go. The roads were flooded and stuff was just going crazy. It was crazy everywhere. And he was sitting there. He's like, bro, what do I do? What do I do? How am I going to make it out? And he was thinking, yo, yo, God, God's got me. If, if, he, if, he, if he wants me to make it out, I'll make it out. If not, then I guess this is it. So then he's sitting there on the roof of his house while everywhere is getting flooded. And then a boat goes by and the boat goes by and he's like, yo man, yo man, you want to get on the boat? You want to get on the boat? I can save you. And the guy's like, nah, man, God's got me. If he wants me to make it out, he, he will do it for me. So the guy on the boat keeps on going. Then a couple minutes later, a helicopter comes by, tries to save the guy on the roof. And the guy on the roof's like, nah, 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 God's got me. God's got me. If he wants me to make it out, then, then he'll do something to help me make it out. Soon enough, it's too flooded, and the guy ends up passing away. And then the guy goes up to heaven, and he's like, God, why do you want me to die on that roof? Why do you want me to die on that roof? And then God's like, what do you mean, man? I gave you two chances. I gave uh, you the guy on the boat and the helicopter. That was me. That was me trying to trying dang. to help you. You just got to look at it like that. You got to look at it like that. You can't just let it sit and pass you by because you really decide what I just what thought happens. of something. It almost like, it's almost like the, it is what it is mindset. Because you can, you can have something bad happen to you and be like, man, it is what it is, man. Like, yeah, this happened to me. Now I'm just doing this. Or you could be like, it is what it is and use that and keep going. Definitely, for sure, for sure. Wow, I like that. It is what it is. I like that. Anything? Oh, Brandon, what are you doing over there? Sorry, yo. <laughs> my <laughs> mic is kind of dipping, bud. Um, but there, yeah, that's crazy. And it is what it is. <laughs> it is what it is. That's what God said to the man. He said. He said it is what it, it is. It is what it is, man. I tried to help you, but you didn't. You didn't. You didn't take my hand. Dang. Crazy story. That's not a true hey, story. Speaking by the of way. crazy stories, could be a true story though. Could be. Speaking of crazy stories, this guy's so. so <laughs> I kind of want to hear the craziest story Ooh. you could tell me about LA, like the Ooh. juiciest, trippiest story, bro. 
Okay. Ooh. You want to go first? No, you go, go first. You go first. Like right. like something that maybe maybe something that you like nobody knows. You wouldn't have filmed it on cam. Nobody would ever heard of it. Like something a little juicy. You know what I'm saying? All right. Ooh. This is this is definitely gonna be a little bit juicy. Me and Ricky. <laughs> I want to know. I want to know. <laughs> we're out in LA and. You guys know there's a lot of parties in LA. There's a lot of influencers in LA. Mm. A lot of creators, a lot of TikTokers, YouTubers. Pretty much your whole for you page is in LA. Mm. And me and Ricky, it's like our first month there. And our boy DJ Fabuloso is also there. And we end up going to this party. It's our first party in LA that we've gone to. And it's at Taylor Holder's massive mansion when he was staying at the Triller Compound. This thing was looking, it's like a castle, bro. This thing is massive. And me, Ricky, Jack, DJ Fabuloso, we all end up going to the party. And I'm just at the party. Taylor Holder's there. Bryce Hall is there. So many TikTokers that you would recognize were there. That's what I'm saying. Like your whole four, you, it was like my- Was Charlie, Charlie there? Charlie D'Amelio? Yeah. Um- she might have been the only one not there. Addison? Yeah, was Addison Everyone, there? Everyone was there. Addison, uh, she may have been there. I, there, there was, there so was a many. lot of people there. Was there. So many. You just don't remember, huh? <laughs> it was like, our, <laughs> that's what I'm saying, bro. It was like our whole, it was like my whole For You page was standing in front of me. And it's kind of like a surreal moment. Bro, so your whole For You page was you like in front of you? Like right. People that you were like, yo, I might not ever see these people, these TikTok influencers. And you were like, yo. <laughs> I, wh I whipped out my phone. I started scrolling, and I'm like, wait, hold up. That's that person. That's that person. That's that person. That's that person. They all really right here in front of me. That's crazy. And then you just realize that everyone's just a person, too. Yeah. Is some of these people, like, some of them are really cool, but also some of them aren't that cool. And it's just like a regular person that just has a platform. I feel like a lot of people get caught up in it. That's what, like, caught up in the scene, I feel like it kind of refers to that. Because people, they get so in awe. Like, yo, Taylor Holder, Bryce Hall, uh, they're all, they're right there. Whoa, Dude, they're, it, they're it's, famous. It's crazy because there's, like, famousness or whatever you want to call it, popularity, like, influencers, YouTubers or TikTokers, and then there's, like, real movie stars. So it's categorized in a way. Yeah, yeah. But low key. I feel like it's almost switching in a way, though. Yeah. Exactly. Like, YouTubers and TikTokers, especially for the younger upcoming generation, are more recognizable and more famous than even a movie star. Literally. Uh, unless you're talking about, of course, like the biggest, like maybe Ryan Reynolds, Will Smith and them. But, even then, though. But like, even them. I would rather meet my favorite influencer. I'd rather meet Roman Atwood than Ryan Reynolds. And, and that's how Same. society and, and the years have gone by. And that's how crazy... YouTube and all that has, has affected that in a way. Wow. For real. But let's get back to the crazy stories. Ricky, what is your craziest story, huh? Craziest story that I have. Wow, so much, so in, much in, in LA. LA. In, in LA. LA, in LA. Oh, okay, in LA. I would say the craziest thing that happened in LA was the night of Jack Doherty's birthday party, bro. <laughs> oh, I think I saw a little clip from that. Oh, that when was your own. It got when out of the him. table. <laughs> Bro, we 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 Our didn't have we didn't have any parties it's in LA. <laughs> I had we, to say we had we had no parties in LA until it was Jack Doherty's 18th birthday, and me, Jack, Nick, and his filmer, and everyone there, we were like, "Oh, let's have a little party at the house," you know. It's a big year. It's, it's, so you gotta celebrate. And, and we said, "Okay, let's invite a couple people." So I think Jack invited some of his friends. We invited a couple people we knew, and we sent out the invitation. And we probably thought it was going to be like 50, maybe, maybe, maybe even 60, 70 people, which is a big, pretty big party, but mm -hmm. nothing crazy. So we invite it. The night comes. And oh my gosh, it turned into Project X. Started off slow, though, because I remember there was about 20 to 30 people at the party. And then it's like I blinked my eyes. And 20 minutes later, yeah. flooded. And you were like, backyard flooded. You were like, yo, this ain't no party anymore. This is a banger. It was a rager. It was crazy. <laughs> it was so many You're people, right. bro. It, it started off so slow. Honestly, there was maybe 20 people in the beginning, and I was like, man, this is probably kind of dead for his 18th for birthday. Real? Like, he's turning from a boy to a man, and this is what we, this is what ha we threw him? Yeah. And then it literally felt like we blinked our eyes. The whole entire backyard was full. The whole inside was full. People were upstairs, downstairs. It was getting so out of hand. And... 
did, did you kind of get scared in, in a way? Or were yeah, you like, I, I got Yo, a little, this is lit. That's how I was. I, was, how Nick was. I wasn't thinking about the consequences or what was going to happen. I was just there like, hey, it's lit. You were like, like, like this. You were like, hey, hey, hey. You woke up the next day. You were like, oh, uh, time oh. to clean up. But one of, the, one of the, well, during the party though, it was just chilling inside and then all of a sudden, Salim the Dream from Nelk walks in. Oh, he did. Jack didn't even invite him. Me and Ricky, we don't even know him. We know Kyle, but no one invited Salim. So many random people, because if just one person gets the address, they send it out to five people. Those five <laughs> people send it out to five more yeah. people, and then just exponentially just goes and goes. And that's the thing that's what happens. Yeah, we probably invited, including Jack, all of us probably invited maybe 50 people. And I would say that night, I would say between five and 600 people were there. And there was actually, there was security at the party too, but they didn't really do a good job because we told them we had a list of people to come in. I'm yeah, we hired sure. security because we knew it was going to get like this, but we wanted security to do their job and make sure to only let in the people that we really knew. The people that were on the list. So what ended up happening was a, the address gets sent out, hundreds of people start coming. I'm pretty sure the streets around our house were like crowded with people like all around the house. So then people are at the gate, not on the list, and they're trying to talk to security. They're like, yo, let me in. Let me into the party. And security's like, nah, nah, nah. But then come to find out the next morning that security was taking bribes from people. No. To yep. get he into was the taking bread? They were, yeah. like, they were like, yo, like, here, 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 here's 40, here's 50. Let me in a little bit. Oh, yeah. Oh, oh yeah. yeah. 100%. Oh, because you guys should have hired me. I know, we should have. Knowing now, we definitely should have. That's something we learned, though. Because right. we're not going to do that. If we ever throw a party again, we're hiring BG for security. You're right. Show those yeah. guns, show those guns. Yo, guns. Whoa, we're going to get demonetized. Whoa. Hey, 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 Underneath hey, this, take just know, it is. Just know, take underneath it is. this, fluffiness is a, is a rock-solid bicep. <laughs> Yo. But yeah, so you guys had a little banger. How was it the day after? Did you? Was there a lot of mess? Did you guys hire anybody to clean up? Or was, was there bad? a mess? Oh, there was mess, big mess. The whole backyard, trash everywhere. I think we had a table out there. Table, Our broken table in half. Was it the broken table? Was broken. <gasps> wait, That's what I was getting wait, to wait, in my happened? story that the, I didn't even talk about. How did the table break? The ping pong table in our house. It was there, and it was getting so crazy. So I was like, I need to do something to make. It was kind of to make everyone. Like set like in a way, it, I don't even know what I'm saying. What are you trying to say? Where he was like, yeah, it was getting it was getting crazy. It was getting was like, crazy. I'm gonna make it more crazy. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it, it, it was the party was getting crazy, and I kind of fell into the hype. I was like, yo, it's getting crazy. I need to get crazy. So that night, everyone was getting crazy. Everyone's playing ping pong. No, they're not. <laughs> <laughs> no. So I step on the table and I jump on the ping pong table, crack half of it. <laughs> And I'm like, all right, so there's only half a ping pong table when left. You fell, and you fell off of the ping pong table? Like, I, I fell through it. <laughs> so Yo. I fell through the table. Oh, so, I get, so I break one side. I'm like, all right, you can't play ping pong with one half. So I get back on the other side, break it. Everyone's like, oh, shoot. And then I go, it's okay, guys. It's okay. I'm living here. It's, it's, my, it's like I'm renting this house. And everyone's like, oh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> that was definitely a crazy, one of the craziest stories while crazy. we were living out in L.A. For sure. Oh, For yeah, sure. That was crazy. I, I feel like the... the party scene is huge in LA. Uh, if you don't have your mindset right, you can probably get caught in it. Do you Def think you guys got caught in the party scene a little bit? Mm, I don't know if I would say caught, but if we didn't pull out when we did, I would say we could. I could see how a lot of people fall into it. Pull out game strong. Pull out game strong for sure, for sure for the Ireland boys. Yeah, because we started going, we went only to a couple and it just got old for me quick because I have a girlfriend, so I'm mm. there and there's only, uh, people are hanging around talking, and I honestly, every time I went, I was like, I just want to go back and hang out with my girlfriend. Which, I didn't really have a girlfriend, so. So Nick was loving it over there. I wasn't, I don't know about loving it, but I would, I definitely went to more parties than Ricky. Wait, you don't have a girlfriend? Bro, I don't have a girlfriend, but wait, wait let me finish my thought, let me finish my thought, we can get into that. But, definitely, I went to more parties out in LA, and I think... There's like a bad connotation about it. If you do it right, it's all about moderation. Life is about a moderation, which I don't think going to the parties themselves was bad, but if you get too much caught up in it, it could be bad. Because there's good things that comes from parties. Yeah, it's kind of like connections. Connect it's it's networking. Of, especially, especially when you're in LA. Because if you go to a frat party or something, 
the connections, you're not really making too many connections. You're kind of just going to You're just mean support. Chad and Brad, you know? Yeah, you're meaning Chad and Brad. Uh, <laughs> Chad and Brad can be dope sometimes, though. But when you're in L.A., the L.A. parties, there's a lot of faces in the influencer thing. That's what I was saying. The, Managers, a lot of cool people, honestly. That's what I was saying. My whole For You page was right in front of me. And you just talk to them. You, you connect with them. And some of them are actually genuine, dope people. And it's kind of dope because they're in the same space that we're in. And you can mm-hmm. actually connect and have a genuine bond. But if you if you're going too much, if you if you start letting it affect your work, like yeah, yeah. you go to a party and the next day you just are like, oh, I don't feel like doing anything, and that carries on and you don't get it done. But if you go to a party the next day, you you can wake up, film your vids, keep going. Then I think if you can manage it properly, it's all about balance. Balance. That's everything in life too. Everything. Yeah. In balance. Life. Also, everything is good in moderation. Yep. And you take that to a certain point where it's. You can't just keep saying doing something and be like, yeah, this is good in moderation. This is good in moderation. But everything is good in moderation. <laughs> you got to be real with yourself, too. Yeah. Because I'm sure some people out there are like, yo, I'm just going to go meet some people, a little party. But a year later, the, the, all they did was go to like 100 parties. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> and then what do they really get done? So if you're doing it, do it right. Yeah. yeah. Every, to each their own, though. To each their own. Yeah. To each their own. And that's own. cool. I mean, yeah. And you guys were at home basically your whole life. So you kind of wanted to experience something different. And for me, I went to college for four years. So mm-hmm. right when I got to college, I, I kind of learned what partying was like. And I was like, yo, this is crazy. Because I was like, <laughs> yo, this is crazy. Like going to clubs and stuff. Yeah. I was like, yo, this is lit. And then after a while, you, you get tired of it. And if you, you do it, if you do it too much, it, it can affect you in a way. Mm-hmm. Uh, I feel like LA was almost Nick and I's college, college experience. experience. Ooh, finish that So word. instead of a four-year college experience... We kind of learned everything, did everything in like two and a half months. And I realized, okay, everything gets old quick. It's not for me. And I'm ready to just uh, begin this nice holiday adventure with the boys. You're also... You're <laughs> Why also- did I say holiday? <laughs> I meant to say quality. <laughs> you're also older than me too. So True. your perspective is a little bit different than mine. And also, yeah. you had a girlfriend when we moved out there. So I can see... Excuse me. <laughs> mm-hmm. I can see... <laughs> I can see how it would get definitely more older quicker. Yeah, more older quicker. Wow, the English is perfection. <laughs> wait, I want wait, bro, bringing it back. I want to ask, what do you mean you don't have a girlfriend, bro? What about that time that I literally flew out your crush across the country and surprised you for your 19th birthday? What literally, happened to that? What happened, bro? I want to know what bro. happened to that. I know what the people want to know what happened. <laughs> bro, I know. She's not my she's not my girlfriend though. I met. That was the, my first time meeting her. You yeah. Don't, you don't just date someone the first Wait, time you meet. Why don't bro? you tell everyone about what happened after? Because you guys went on a date. You guys, you know, hung out a little. You went bit. on a date. You guys went to the Santa Monica Pier. Oh, after we filmed that video. Oh, you went, you went on Santa Ferris Monica wheel. Pier? All right, all right. So Ooh, the juice is about to get sipped. <laughs> so shout out to Ricky for flying out my crush. Honestly, great brother. Tell everyone that I'm the best big brother ever. You're the best big brother. Guys, everybody listening to this, watching this, Ricky Ireland is the best big brother I could ever ask for. But to be fair, I did redo your entire room for your birthday the previous year. All right, bro, but I, I potentially might have set you up with your future girlfriend. I don't know. She kind of friend zoned me, guys. I'm not going to lie. No. No. Tell Wait, us a little what? bit about it, huh? Okay. 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 We, we're going to get, we're digging straight into the juice, huh? Dude. Me and Brandon don't even know what actually happened. Nick's never ta- Nick doesn't open up. He doesn't up tell to us. us anything, man. Especially when it comes to relationship, Nick is a very quiet guy. Me and Brandon, if you guys don't know, we both have girlfriends. We do, we do. Nick's the single one, and we, me and Brandon, always talk about each other. We talk about it with Nick. And then I'll ask a little question to Nick. I'll be like, "Oh, what's up?" He's like, "How's the weather, man?" He'll just like, walk away. he'll just change the topic. No, so. He will change true, the topic. He he will will change he'll the be like, he'll be like this. Like, say, ask him a question right now, hypothetically. Hey, Nick, how is it going? No, no, no. Ask him, ask him oh, a question about, about, a about a girl. Oh, okay, about a girl. My bad, my bad. Yo, Nick, um, who are you talking to? You have, do you have a girlfriend? Or are you talking to anybody? He'll, he'll be like this. Dude, Brandon, we're on a podcast right now. We got we to gotta talk. <laughs> <laughs> he'll like change it so like All right, all right. Quickly. What do you guys, what, what's the question? What am I answering? I'm what, confused. What, end, what ended up happening after? You know, everyone saw the video of me surprising her with you. Whoa. That was a quality vid. Oh, you surprised her with me? Yeah, she actually really <laughs> wanted to see you. I'm not going to lie. Well, like, I called her before, and she was really excited to see you. So I want to know what happened after. Wait, for real? Yeah, she was very like, oh, my, Nick Ireland. I love that guy. She did not say she that, bro. She didn't say that. <laughs> no, she was like. What did she really say? She, she said Nick and I me. talked a couple times. 
I don't even know like how we know each other, but we just talked a couple times and he seems cool and I'm down to do it. The fact that she went out there on a one day notice shows how dope she is and shows that she's definitely like, she definitely like likes you even if it's not in the boyfriend way and just like a friend way. <sighs> yeah, man. Say it. Sorry, I had to be real. Come on, let's hear a little yeah, bit let's, about it. Come on, look at him try to avoid it. After, after Ricky... She pied me in the face, whatever. I got surprised by her, caught me off guard. I took a little shower, got dressed, and then me and her, we went to Santa Monica Pier, mm -hmm. and we we walked around on the pier, and we were just chit-chatting. It was a little stroll. Look how nervous he's getting, bro. <laughs> you guys can see it on the video. I don't want to slip up. I don't want to slip up. Yo, slip your face up. is literally red. It is what it is, bro. bro. Come on. All right. No, literally, we went to Santa Monica Pier. We walked around. We kind of chit-chatted. I was totally unexpecting. Unexpect. It was so unexpected. Were you was. nervous? I, I, Were you nervous? Were you nervous? <laughs> I want to um, ask you. I wasn't as nervous. Gen, gen, genuinely. Gen, 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 <laughs> I can't even say the word. Genuinely. Yeah. You, I, I feel like he was, was probably less because he had no time to think about the day. That's you true. Know what I mean? That's yeah. true. It was just kind of forced upon me. I was definitely a little bit nervous, but she was cool. So when it, she made it less awkward and less nervous because we were just chatting, vibing a little bit. We walked around. Um, I think we just walked around Santa Monica Pier. I don't even really remember if we did anything after He was that. so lost in her eyes Wait, that did, he didn't Did you say him. that was the first time you met her in real yes, life? Yes, bro. First time. IRL? I mean, that was first time, bro. Crazy. <laughs> Dude, Ricky, you're honestly a good brother, man. Thank Great you, bro. Brother, Thank man. you. You're a good brother. You're welcome. <laughs> you're not my brother. <laughs> but then after, it was my birthday, so then we all went out to dinner. It wasn't just me and her. Like me, Ricky, Morgan, or mom. Oh, a little double date and mom. It was double, <laughs> double, double, double date plus mom. Wait, wait yeah. it was double. So the mom was fifth wheeling. Yo, I can't lie yeah, though. IBM is probably the best wing woman ever. For sure. I can see that. Sure. I can see that. Uh, our mom, she helped me with Morgan. She just is so. Wait, how? <laughs> I want to hear that story. Because more like her, her and Morgan, if you don't know, Morgan's my girlfriend. My girlfriend and my mom are like best friends because IBM is just so funny and relatable she makes you feel at home even if you don't know her it's so crazy bro jillian from flying out my crush on my birthday video she loves ibm yeah everyone loves ibm honestly kind of ibm making me jealous because she loves ibm more than she wanted to hang out with me honestly so where i want to know where you guys are at where are you guys at because you just talked about that day but what happened after all right what happened when after, she went back home you know? she went back home she flew back to boston and then a couple weeks later a month later in october we ended up going I invited her to a little wedding. <gasps> oh my gosh. Brooklyn, I forgot about Brooklyn that. and Bailey's wedding. You were there too, Ricky. Brooklyn and Bailey's wedding, we did go. Well, not Brooklyn and Bailey. Well, no, they didn't get married together, but Bailey got <laughs> married. But like Bailey from Brooklyn and Bailey. You get the point. But then I invited her to that and me, Ricky, Morgan, and her, we all kind of chilled while we were at the wedding and we hung out. But it was kind of more like a squad type thing. It wasn't more like a one-on-one -on -one date type thing. So yeah, she, wait, how, she did how many weeks him? was this after Ricky brought her out? So my birthday was in September, and then the wedding was in October. So a month later. But the thing is, I invited her to the wedding before I ever met her, though. Before Ricky ever surprised That's me with That's crazy. Her. And she said she was you're, down. You were going to say, yo, this is the first time meeting, but do you want to go to this wedding with me? Yeah. You wanna, she, it basically, you asked her to get married first time before you even <laughs> no, meet her. You, you were foreshadowing. You were like, I'm going to bring you to this wedding just so you know one day this is going to be. Then, yeah. he, no, he was when we were sitting down. He, he whispered I was like, to her and he's like, that's going to be me and you one day. Yep, that's going to be me and he you. He said that. No, I, that's cap. I did not say that. I may have honestly said it, but I, I, don't, said it, bro. I, don't think, I don't think I did, bro. Okay, so after the wedding, you guys went to the wedding. Then did you guys hang out again after or? Um, well, the wedding was, so we were, it was a couple day trip. The wedding was like two days into the trip and then we hung out the rest of the days there. But, but I, I'm going to be honest. It was, it was, she definitely did friend zone him. She friend zoned me heavily. On that trip. Why do you think that I is? I forgot about that, but Dude, yeah. can I tell you what happened? We were all watching a movie together. Ooh. Me. Nick did one of these. Nick did one of these. Like, he did a little. Wait, do it, do it, do it. Oh. <laughs> Yo, bro. <laughs> literally, literally, bro. <laughs> so me, Ricky, and his girlfriend, and then Jillian, the girl from the Crush video, we were all watching a movie together, and obviously, Ricky and his girlfriend, they're cuddled up. 
I'm looking at them all cut it up, and I'm like, damn, man, I kind of wish I could cut it up with someone. And I look over to my right, and then there she is. What'd and you do? What'd you do? I hit it with a little slide. <laughs> and then, bro. No, I know what happened. I know. Ricky knows what I happened. I saw it happen. No. <laughs> she slid over the opposite no. way. Bro. She hit it with the slide. And then I, I think I tried one more time. No, no, you didn't try. Wait, before you, before you tried one more time, I was such a good brick brother. I went downstairs and I turned the AC down colder. No, because, to make it so, cold. Yeah, I turned it colder. I, I turned it colder. So I tried sliding next to her a little bit and then she scooted away. And then I tried one more time and then made brushed arms a little bit, brushed legs. And she screwed it over again, and I was like, all right, forget this, bro. <laughs> just take, take that out. I'm just taking the out. Take that out. Here, take it. I, Use it as I a lesson, definitely though. took it out. So after that, it was kind of just like, you felt the vibes you were, uh, yeah, this I was is like, all right, happening. all right, bro. It's... He was like, they're going to be good friends. But I was like, bro, how, we, we went to a wedding together and can't even cuddle up while we trying to watch a movie? It was a scary movie, too. It was a scary it movie. Was a scary, oh, you guys set it up. You're like, let's put a scary movie on. So she no, they like wanted that. to. They she honestly like, wanted she to. Like, ah! And then grabs you and she's scared. Yeah, but that didn't happen. It Bro, was, this it was, it was more. I was the one screaming like ah, trying to grab her, and then <laughs> she did ah. She was scared of me. Bro. <laughs> so you were the horror movie, basically. Uh, to yeah, her. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The scene was set perfectly for Nick, though. It was scary movie. It was a cabin Airbnb. It was cold. But there was not, you, no it, one else she could. If you can't get the cuddle session in that, just take the L. I you took know? the L, but. <laughs> I mean, we we still. So what'd you learn? What'd you learn from it? I mean, talking about. Others, I learned, bro. All girls are the same. <laughs> love she in, in my, my brain. brain love. Not playing. Love. She's cool, but I don't know, bro. It, it just—it's not meant to be, right? It threw me for a little loop, bro. Cause, just put it in perspective, she flew. Me and Ricky flew from California to Texas to go to the wedding. She flew. She flew. She hopped on a plane, bro. It's not like I'm asking her to go get ice cream. She hopped on a plane For real. to go to the wedding with me, pretty much. And then but nothing nothing happened. So I was just, I was a little confused. Like, wouldn't you be a little confused, Was she confused, using you bro? for clout? Yeah, do, you yeah, think, no, do you think she was using you for clout? Dude, that's... That's what I want to know. That's a story for another time. I'm not I don't know. I'm not going to lie. I got a little weird vibes a little bit sometimes. Jillian, I don't cap. if you're watching this, you're a dope person, but I just, wanna, I just wanted to ask. Dope person, but... Because she did hit 10K after we hung out. She was popping off a little bit. She did. She did. Um, I'm just kidding. She's cool. She, nah, I don't think she was. Cool. I don't, I don't, think, I don't she think, was. think she was. I think... It's just a tough spot for you I think as it a man. was assumptions. We made a little assumption, and she made an assumption, and then... But I, I can't blame person for... For not liking you. No, definitely, yeah. yeah. Definitely not in the spot to, And, I mean, you really aren't in the spot to blame anybody for anything. We I still mean, chit-chat every now and then, though. They like, do be FaceTiming sometimes. I saw them. Yeah. Sometimes. Speaking of FaceTime, you going to FaceTime her right now on the podcast? Mm, I tried to FaceTime. Oh, she just snapped me, no actually. No way. Should I open it? Yeah, open it right now. Whoa. 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 And then she's like this on the snap. Are you talking about me on the pod today? <laughs> <laughs> she snapped me, but there's no words on the snap, so... Dang. Take that out. But at least it wasn't a picture of a wall. I hate when that happens. Oh, that's bad, right? <laughs> that's when you gotta, gotta know you gotta stop If you stopping. get a picture of a wall, take the L, bro. Take the L. Yeah, man. Y'all got girlfriends, though, huh? Let oh, me hear yeah. a little bit about that. Ooh. About girlfriends and how this whole situation came about? Well, I want, I'm honestly genuinely curious about well, your girlfriends. They're back in Florida, right? Yeah, they're both about, of them. Yep. And you like, got, they have to become friends soon here. Yeah. Right. I'm genuinely curious about how how it kind of went telling them that you're leaving and doing this whole thing because that'd be kind of tough. Because oh man, I had a girlfriend at one point, and then when we left to being apart from each other, it just it'd be different. It was tough. You want me to you want me to go first, BG? Dang, look at us get quiet now. <laughs> <laughs> CK was feeling when we dang he kind of put it on us I'll take it I'll take it I'll get in that Asian glow all right I'll say I'll say when this idea first came about I just casually mentioned to her I was like yo me and my friends might be moving to Texas and if we were just moving to Texas and staying here my girlfriend probably would have came with us and stayed and she would have been chefing up too she would have been cooking Morgan's the best she would have been cleaning cooking doing all that she's she's chefing up in there and she was down for that and then after the idea came about of moving on the road from place to place, I was like, okay, that's a little less feasible for her because just like traveling around, there's literally no more room in our van. 
Yeah. And just the chaotic lifestyle of always on the go wasn't the best from our relationship. And I actually used that of what I learned from the other house of being in a, room, a house with a bunch of guys. Look at you learning. Yeah. Okay. Learning. So a bunch of houses with the guys, and it wasn't an ideal situation. I would rather just live with her on my own one day. And I told her it wasn't the best, and she got really sad. She was like, you can't just leave me. And I was understanding of her, and I, I was like, I understand where you're coming from, but I know I need to do this journey with these boys. It just feels right. There's something in my heart that's telling me to do it. And we had a conversation, and I'm, I'm just going to put it all out there. There was talks of us not working out, honestly. Because long distance for that long, because we're telling our families, our friends, everyone that we're going for a year, it was just hard. And I had to have that conversation. And it wasn't a one, one conversation done. It was like a couple week thing. And then one time I sat her down and she was, she was like, so are you really going? And I told her I'm actually going. And she told me, she, she thought it to herself and she loves me so much. She was like, I want to support you in everything you do. I know you need to go do this with the boys. And she basically said, we're going to work this out and we're going to fight through it. So, yeah, she just supported me. She changed her mind from where, I don't know how this is going to work. I don't want you to go to, you got to go do this. And when you come back, we still have the rest of our life still live together. Ooh. You know, it's only, it's only a year. That's good. That's good. I like that. I like that uh, support. She, at first support she wasn't like supportive though. Nice. She wasn't supportive at first, but then she realized like, I'm going to go do it. Then she was like, Yo, you got to do this, and now she's she wants me to do the best. She wants the podcast to work. She wants our channel, everything to work out. So I love to hear that, man. It's hard. Honestly, it's hard though, right, Rick? Love you, bro. Love you, bro. You okay? Love you, man. You okay? Love no, you, it is hard because I've been thinking. I've, like the last memory I have of Morgan, you guys don't know. It's so hard when you're in the house, and I'm saying bye to her. I'm like, yo, bye. I'm looking at her, like I might not see her for I don't know how long. And she's crying, she's crying, she's crying. And we said bye like 20 times. I know this happened to you. Yeah, it did happen to me. <laughs> we said bye like 20, 30 times. And then you're like, bye, bye, bye. And then you're crying and you're like, bye, bye, bye. And there's one time you're like, bye. And that's the last bye you're going to say. It's, yeah. But you got to think of it more as not a bye, but a see you later. Because saying bye, <clears throat> when you say bye, it's like, yo, I'm never going to see you again. Yeah. And it would be really hard. And I've been through it. But when you say see you later, there's a little glimmer of hope at the end. It's, yo. A uh, little light at the end of the tunnel. Yeah, right? there's a light at the end. Well, because when you say bye, there's no light at the end of the tunnel. It's bye, boom, gone. Yeah. But then see you later is. I'll see you in a little bit. I'll see you yeah, in a couple, yeah. couple see weeks, soon. couple months. Yeah. And there's FaceTime. Soon you can just pop on your little VR headset and they'll be actually right there. <laughs> yeah, see? Yeah. I hear you. I hear you. That, definitely that moment, though, of when you're leaving is the hardest. And then you get acclimated and accustomed to being away. You know what I mean? Let's yeah. hear let's hear it from BG. Yeah. Oh, I mean, I was in the same situation as Ricky. It's a crazy story how it came up though. So, <laughs> you guys told me about it and I was like, this is something I would not mind trying trying something and trying it and going around the country with the boys. <clears throat> so, how how it came up was I believe it was Thanksgiving dinner. And my little cousin was there, and he no wa way. he watches you guys. I don't think I actually I've n I didn't tell you guys the story on how yeah, it came up. I've never heard. So this. my little cousin was there. He watches you guys. Shout out my little cousin. Hey. <laughs> he watches. He watches you guys. And we were sitting on the couch. So me, my girlfriend, and him. And I was basically gonna tell her the weekend. It was Thursday. I think Thanksgiving was on a Thursday. Yeah, because Black Friday is always after Thanksgiving. Thanksgiving so, is always on Thursday. It is right. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So I was with her. <laughs> we were sitting on the couch, and then. My little cousin was like, in his like voice, he was like, "Oh, Brandon, I heard you were gonna move uh, across the country with the Ireland boys." Oh, he brought up like that. <laughs> he brought up no, like that with her next to me, and I was like, "Oh, bro, I was kind of." Wait, how talk. did he know? I think because I, I I talked to my mom about it, oh. and I think she might have said something to him just uh. because. Uh, he would be hyped like for me, you know. And he's like, "Oh, you're going with the Ireland yeah, boys, yeah, right?" Yeah, yeah, you know what I'm saying. So, so, so that came up, and I was like, "Oh, bro, like." Oh, so I didn't, put it on I, you. I didn't really acknowledge it at that time. And this is a, a true story. So we went, I, I drove to my house with her. So I had to drop her off later. So I went back and we were on the way back and we like, I, we talked about it on the way back and stopped at a gas station. I had to fill up gas. It was kind of awkward because she was in the car. I like told her, I was like, yeah, this is going to happen. Let me go fill my gas real quick. So, <laughs> oh. so she was in the car and I mean, talked about it, kind of told her and, and I, 
when I the way that I think is and and I like to like when I do things I I put myself in other people's position, you know? I think that's important. Yeah, yeah, yeah because no, yeah, yeah. you can say stuff but in something like this especially is if if I put myself in somebody else's shoes and I'm and I say Hey, yeah, I'm, I'm about to uh, travel the country with, with these boys and, and one, make a podcast, two, make my own content on my channel and I'm going to do this. Imagine being in, in, in her, her, her place. In, in her shoes. In and, her shoes, exactly. And she's never met us, so it's not like she probably knows some of your friends. You're like, yo, I'm going to go on a trip with these boys, but she doesn't even know. Yeah, she doesn't know we you never guys. met. Still have never met. And, and it's, it's kind of unpromising because I don't really know. It's not like 100% this works out for me, you know? It, like, not guaranteed. Like we've talked before, this is a risk, but it's a risk that I'm willing to take and it's a risk that I'm willing to learn from and have an experience from. So I think it's kind of hard to grasp your mind around what I'm saying to you, you know? Does that sound strange? And I feel bad for our girlfriends so much. Because listen, I'm like, yeah, I'm going to drop everything I have right now and, and you're going to have to make this work and I'm going to travel across 12 states in a year, go to 12 different Airbnbs and experience this in a way without you. You know, that's like heartbreaking. Yeah, sure. Just that's yeah. somebody. Uh, yeah, I can't and, but, even imagine. But at the end of the day, and I, I've learned through my 20, 23 years of life is at the end of the day, you do what you want to do for yourself. And you, you, you don't want to let other people's voices and what they say affect your decisions because at the end of the day you don't want any regrets mm -hmm. so for me yeah. I, I heard this and I was like this is an opportunity that I want to take and I want to do it for me it's not for anybody else it's something that I want to do and if I didn't take this opportunity and do this I might be up all night for I don't even know how long and say regretting what if what if what if what if I went what if, and imagine the podcast and the support is crazy. So imagine, it is. imagine if I was home right now and I was watching the pod and I was like, dude, I had the opportunity to be on this pod, to, to share my stories, to share my experiences, to, you know, I don't know. It's just do whatever. You would have, you would have been like, you would have been like hitting yourself every night. Like, oh my gosh, bro. Like, oh, I could be, you know? And at the end of the day, you got to do what's best for you. Cause like you said, you're the one living your life. People can tell you this and that from different directions, different mm -hmm. perspectives. But at the end of the day, none of them are living your life. It's your life. So you really got to do in, what you feel. In a way, I think that's also a hard concept to grasp because especially with social media growing, a lot of stuff can influence the way you act, the way you choose your decisions or what you kind of want to do. And you really have to think in your mind and be like, this is what I want to do True. or I want to do this. Because I want to do it. Not because Bryce Hall is doing yeah. something. Or not because Woo. Taylor Holder Yo, is doing something. Or not because this person or this person or this person is doing something. And it doesn't even need to be anybody famous. It could be like somebody you know back home and they're working this job or working this job. And, and in your mind, do you want to do that because you personally want to do that? Or are you doing that because, yo, Chad or Brad or John or Johnny or Tyler is doing that? And, and I that's think that's true. something huge in life to, to really think about. For real, for real, that's, that's big. Because you look at things and if you watch a bunch of YouTube, depending on what you're watching, you might see people going out partying and to you, subconsciously, you're like, yo, that is what that. fun is. I need to do that to have fun and be happy. But you might not even like doing it at all because people like different things. Everyone's so different. you might not like going out and partying. Yeah, it's crazy. But going back to what I was saying, yeah, basically that's kind of my story. And we had multiple talks and I think Ricky had multiple talks with his girlfriend Definitely as well. Multiple talks. Me too. I had and multiple talks with my girlfriend. You're invisible? Yeah, invisible girlfriend. She's right here actually on the pod right here. <laughs> Don't cry, NCK. But yeah, so talk to her and, and eventually we had multiple talks and I, I told her how, you know, this is where my life is heading, I hope. And I really want to do this for me. I want to take the opportunity and she really understands and she supported me, you know, because there's a difference. She could have supported me or she could have been, yo, no, like, I don't want you to do that. You should do this. You should get this job and you should stay here. And, and, and this is what you should do. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, and, yeah, she, yeah. and she supported my decision, which is honestly so huge. And yeah. shout, out, shout out to you because that's, that's, I think is. Shout out to our girlfriends for real, yeah, right? Because I, yeah. Shout out to your, my girlfriend. Love right? you so much. <laughs> Well, your girlfriend is good too. Oh, she's out yeah. there somewhere in the world. I'm talking, I'm manifesting. But knowing it. that, like having the support, because imagine you leave, because you know you're going to leave. Imagine you leave and she's like, I don't want you to go, fine, whatever. 
then the whole time you're subconsciously thinking, oh my gosh, she's mad at me, she's this, this. But to have someone that even if it wasn't the right decision for them, because them, you're, we, I told my girlfriend, I'm doing this. You told your girlfriend, you're doing this. They almost just have to accept it, which is a hard thing. They're, there's almost no input from them. They get to talk about it, but it's happening. Yeah, because you know deep down, like, you want to do this for yourself. You know you're so going to do it. whether or not, like, it's happening or not, you're like, deep down, this is happening. I'm yeah. doing this, and I'm doing it for but, me. But That's them, tough. them being able to, like, put, literally put their feelings and emotions aside of them wanting to be, have their boyfriend near them and say, you guys do it. You guys go be the best men that you can be is so, like, energizing. It gives you, like, that's a good woman. That's like that a woman. That is a good woman, yeah. All this talk, man, I'm not going to lie. I'm feeling a little lonely. I'm sitting all by myself. Y'all at least got each other over there. Hey, what's up, brother? What's up, man? <laughs> but, yeah, and like you, said, girlfriend, huh? like you said, Ricky, how they kind of accepted it and support us, support us and in a way, you could be in a situation right now where maybe it's you're, you want to do something and maybe... It's not your girlfriend that, in a way, holding you back mm -hmm. or something else. It could be a parent or it could be a teacher. something that you look up to or a teacher or something. Mm -hmm. And you can still apply, like, the same things that we're saying to that situation that you're in. To any kind Ooh. of relationship. Not like, exactly. Not like boyfriend-girlfriend relationship, but, yeah, you're right. Parent, teacher. Friend. Guardian, brother, friend. Best friend. Even parents, even. Yeah. Because yeah. even when we, start, when we first started YouTube, our, I'll be honest, our parents weren't the most, they, they were supportive of us doing it. But they didn't think it could turn into what it is now, like a full-time mm -hmm. career. And now they have supported. But sometimes you got to make your decision based on what you feel and believe it. And then people will come around eventually. Like our family has come around. A year from now, after this podcast, well, it's already the number one in the universe. And the, the Nebula. And the Nebula. But once it's the first in the, like the, the <laughs> metaverse too. Ooh. In the <laughs> metaverse? What yeah. about the Ooh. multiverse? The multiverse. Ooh. Once it's the first Ooh. in that, everyone, like a year from now, after it's already doing crazy, it's already doing crazy, like 50,000 views on the first episode and almost 30,000 subscribers. By the time you're watching this, we might be past 30,000 subscribers. We probably will be because Honestly. you guys are showing so much love. Thank you guys so much for allowing us to be able to do this. Like for real. Give a, give a little round of applause for you guys. A little round of applause. Round of applause. What I've realized, though, is that people will come around if you do your thing and you make it happen. At first, everyone doubts you. Mm. Then when they see you start doing good, they're like, wow, man, you're, you're kind of doing it. And then mm. when you become something, people are like, oh, my gosh. They want to be around you. They want to tell people about how they knew you. Yep. We said last episode, we're going to do a little segment in the podcast where you guys get to ask us questions, whether it be advice, motivation, relationship stuff. And we're going to pick out a couple most of the episodes and answer them and give our genuine thoughts so this is the first time we're doing this what are the questions we each have one I'll, I'll start off i'll start off so okay, okay, uh, okay. i think this question's you know it's entertaining to me because some things might happen off camera that you don't want to show oh. to your fans so the question is basically what is one of the craziest things that has happened on camera but you couldn't show it on youtube so the question is, something crazy that happened, but it was too crazy. Too crazy to be like, I'm putting this on YouTube and I want everybody to see it because, I don't know, maybe it just, you know. Because most good. of the crazy stuff we leave in the videos because the crazy stuff makes you guys the videos are real. good. You guys are real. And Everything you do is real. That'd be, yeah, that's true. that's true. And it'd be the best part of the videos. Like the crazy stuff, that's what people want to see. So oh, what about that one time when we were in LA it was in the original video, but we had to take a video down and re-upload it to YouTube because... I remember that video. Of oh, what happened. The, okay, I know when Nick's talking about the prank where we were Venmoing ourselves from strangers' phones. So we'd go up to people, we'd ask to borrow their phone and so we could call our mom, and when we took their phone, we would Venmo ourselves $20. We'd give them $100 after, so don't worry, we weren't, we weren't stealing. Mm -hmm. But... We would remember ourselves twenty dollars, and we accidentally ended up doing it on a law professor. Not, not key. <laughs> not key because once Ricky did the little Venmo to himself, and then Ricky whipped out a hundred dollars and said, "Oh, it's just a prank. It's okay. It's okay. Here's a hundred dollars." The law professor uh -uh. was not she, having she, it. She, she was, was she was like she was like according to law zero seven six nine seven. You are officially stealing from me. That's pretty much <laughs> what yeah, she pretty said. Much. She was literally like that. She was like, "This is against the law, like so proper." And when that was happening, you guys don't even know, we almost ended up getting sued for that video. Literally almost ended up getting sued. After we uploaded the video, 
the law professor sent an email that said, you must take this video down per my request at the disposal of law 0.4. She literally she typed it. And she quoted the, law, the law. Like law of California state law 0.75 states that any recording anyone without their permission and <laughs> uploading it on. And, and we were just like, what the heck? So we took it down, blurred her face, and then uploaded it again. And then we got another email and she was still not satisfied with that. So we had to change her voice. Change her voice. Make it a little bit lower so it sounds like so this So instead in of saying like, uh, according to law 3.6, she was like, okay. According to law 3.75, <laughs> you must take it down. And if there's someone you don't want to mess with when it comes to the law, a law professor would be near the bottom of the list. You don't want to mess with them. And not only that, in the video, you guys don't even know what really happened because the cops came. And you guys see in the video, Nick walks away because I tell Nick to leave. Nick has the camera and I didn't want them to delete any of the footage. So I'm telling mm -hmm. Nick, yo, run, run, run. Nick runs away. The cops tell me to get on my knees, sit down, put my hands up. Ooh. Yeah. <laughs> and they're yelling at me. They're, they literally were like, whoa, what do you have in your backpack? They didn't know what I had. And I told Nick to run away. Nick was filming from so far away that the mic ended up cutting out. You can't hear anything. But you can see me have my hands up, sitting on the ground, crisscross applesauce, and the cops are questioning me. And luckily, the lady felt so bad, and she was just like, oh, man, I feel bad for this kid now, that she let me go. She told the cops, let me go, basically. You almost forgot one of the funniest parts, I think, was when the cops were telling you, get on the ground, get on the ground. They didn't know who you were. They thought you were literally a theft on campus. So yeah. they're freaking out. They're like, yo, chill, chill. You got you to gotta stay there. You got to stay there. And then they ended up asking Ricky, have you ever been arrested before? Oh. And you can't, oh. I mean, you can, but you don't want to lie to the cops because they're going to find out the truth sooner or later. So you can't hear it in the video because it cut out, but I literally said, yes, sir, I've been arrested multiple times. No. <laughs> <laughs> that voice cracked Bro, I got nervous. Wait, it's kind of funny because I'm thinking, what I'm thinking right now is imagine the phone call. She's like, hi, um, yes, there's a kid that he went up to me and I gave him my phone and then he Venmoed himself $20. And then he, <laughs> and then he gave me $100. Can you arrest him? Yeah. Like the $100 was right in front of her face. She Cash money. She could hold it up to the light, do the little, do the little light thing, see the real blue ship. It was a real $100. But I don't know. She didn't want an $80 profit for nothing. Literally. Yeah. But the way she described it on the phone with the cop, because I was standing there, she was like, this man, he's going around campus. He's taking money from all these students. He's taking, we must stop him right now. He's taking virtual yeah. money. Oh. Yeah. And also what happened Also, was, we, we Venmoed back the money every time too. So they made $100 and their money back. That is true. And money back guaranteed. <laughs> and also what happened was the law professor started asking Ricky for his ID and she said, she said, give me your ID or your passport. Like, bro, Ricky's not just walking yes, around. Yes, ma'am, here's my passport right here out of my pocket. <laughs> He's not just walk who walks around with their passport in their pocket. And then another funny part of the story was on the Venmo, Ricky's Venmo says Ricky Ireland, not Richard Ireland. Oh, yeah. Which is Ricky's legal name, Richard Ireland. And then they ask for Ricky's ID. Ricky whips out his driver's license, shows the law professor, and the law professor says, that says Richard Ireland. Your Venmo says Ricky Ireland. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know about this. I ain't gotta call the cops. She's, Something seems fishy. She was like saying I was Bruh. committing like identity theft. Oh my goodness. And yeah, that whole thing was such a big ordeal. We ended up taking the video down like twice. The video is still up though now. The third version after the voice changed, the everything. All right, all right. Let's hear your question. You want to hear mine? Or you want to hear yours? Let's hear your question that you found. Mine is a mine is a kind of is joke. It juicy? Is it funny or? What? I won't say mine's juicy, but mine's a, like a little cheesy question. What does that even mean? Yeah. You'll see what it means. Okay, this is it about. That, that was so serious. And this mine is this: if you could only eat cheese for the rest of your life. What type would it be? <laughs> <laughs> of all bro, the questions, this we is where you pick. Back. Yo, we, we, bro, bro, Ricky, because before we were like, <laughs> yo, we're all going to choose a question and like we won't tell each other what it is. And Ricky's like, yo, my question is, blah, 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 blah. and I'm like, bro, this is what you do. This is cheese? the question? But what kind of cheese? Genuinely, I want the people want to know. Ladies first. Go ahead, Ricky. <laughs> Wait, this is my question. I'm asking you. You're the lady. No, that's not your question. You just found it. Bro, br from the fan. I, you answer. Ladies first. We all have to answer the question. Yeah, but you I want to hear your You want to hear mine? Ladies first. I'll I'm go, trying, I'll I'm go, trying I'll to go. be a gentleman, I'll go okay? First. I'll go first, but, but I'm not a lady. I'm a male. I'm a boy, and I'm a male. So, <laughs> okay. 
Uh, I would probably choose the only cheese that I order on sandwiches and everything else. And I'm going to go with a Swiss cheese. Oh, You do what? seem like a Swiss, like Swiss cheese guy. I like Swiss. I like the little holes in the Swiss. I, I'm pretty sure Swiss cheese is like old cheese, right? Isn't it like... It smells like dirty feet to it me. Does. I don't like Swiss. You know there's such thing as maggot cheese? With maggots crawling through it? That's not the is cheese. Is that your favorite? <laughs> no, that's yeah, not that's anyway, You can order that somewhere? Like I can get that shipped here and we can try it? Like... I don't know if you eat the maggots. It's definitely but Nick's favorite cheese. I was watching a show and there was cheese with maggots in it, but it was on purpose. That's not the cheese that I would eat for the rest of my life. All right, no. what, what cheese would you pick? Um, there's got to save the best. There's for a last lot week. of cheeses out there, man. But I think I got to go with something versatile if it's the only cheese I'm going to be eating. And I think I'm going to have to go with cheddar cheese, bro. Classic, sharp, yeah. sharp cheddar. Mm, okay, that's an okay pick. Bro, what do you mean? Well, he's like this. <laughs> well, I'm gonna pick the best cheese in yes, the game. I am. It's gonna be from. Uh, it's like yes. gonna be like this. I am. Go- I want to pick the four cheese Gouda blend. Whoa, mix- whoa! No, 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 bro. That's not a single cheese. That's, yeah, that's four, four cheese. That's four cheeses. One of those cheeses is probably cheddar. Yeah, the four cheese blend and Swiss. Bro, four cheese blend is not a type of cheese. All right, fine. Though. You want me to be honest? The cheddar cheese I would pick. Would be mozzarella. So oh, nice. Oh, I love so mozzarella. So simple. Yeah, that's good, that's so good. versatile. So just it adapts to the flavor of whatever you put it on nicely. You know what I mean? Well, you but became a cheese connoisseur? I am a cheese connoisseur. The amount of people that have been cheesed at me, I know all the you, cheddars. You're a big cheese guy, huh? I, uh, people get cheese at me. I'm not cheese, though. You, you, look, you like look like a cheese. piece of cheese right now. Like, literally. Dude, you look like Swiss cheese. I look like cheddar. You look like moldy cheese. <laughs> <laughs> Blue cheese. That's blue cheese. Right there. Even worse. Than- that's facts. That's facts. All right. All right. Let's go into your question. Mine was just a little joke. All right. My question. It's a little bit thought provoking. I guess it's more for Ricky because he can kind of understand it more. BG, not so much yet until this podcast not takes yet. off. Not okay. Yet, okay. Okay. One day you will learn. One young day. Grasshopper. One day, young grasshopper. But the question is: Would you guys rather be rich or famous? If you weren't either, only choose one. So, would you rather be famous and? not have a bunch of money or would you rather have a bunch of money and no one really knows who you are i know my answer dang do i go first or do you go bro you go i think i would honestly genuinely rather oh man this is so tough i don't know I yeah know. I, it's a hard question because i've heard things that other people have said and like cliche like word for word is like rich and famous and always happiness. So for me, and I've never experienced the fame and I haven't experienced being rich yet because I'm so young. I think you guys have kind of experienced both in the way. Mm -hmm. So for you, it's like, it's kind of a hard decision. You guys have experienced both. That's why I said I had more question for Ricky, kind of. Dude, I'm really thinking. Because it's it's a, it's kind of not a big debate, but it's very interesting to hear what people say about this. I'm I'm genuinely thinking. You want me to go? No, let me just think for a second. All right, Ricky is thinking. I I have my question. I'm uh, not my question. <laughs> <laughs> I have my answer. I think I'd rather be famous because I could use that fame to not only make money and help people, but I also like using the fame as a platform for positivity like i feel like i can impact more with the fame i'm not talking i want to be famous like all i just all i wanted to do was be famous so everyone knows me i feel like especially this podcast it'll you can impact people in such a grand way with what you do and how you carry yourself there's a lot of kids and there are a lot of people that look up to us when you're famous people are always like analyzing you and with your actions you can inspire so many and then you can also use your fame to make money and then use that money to support yourself Mm -hmm. but i do also see the side of being rich without being famous which because you can take care of yourself and then no one knows you you're not in the spotlight both have benefits and Honestly, I could have gone either way, and that's just something I thought in the moment because I had no time to think about it. Yeah, I definitely could go either way, kind of, but I'm feeling, I'm leaning more on the side of uh, rich and not famous just Mm -hmm. Mm because, you know, you know, sometimes, I'm not saying, oh, I'm super famous, oh, oh, yeah, 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 but sometimes I just want to do my thing, and when you're famous, it feels like you're under the microscope and people analyzing you, saying all this stuff about you. And you feel like you have a certain thing to live up to. A lot to. of pressure. Lo- definitely a lot of pressure, and you got to be a certain type of way, which I love the podcast because we can just be ourselves on it. 
But mm. I'm just talking in general. Like if I if I if I mess up and do something, a bunch of people are gonna be roasting me, mm-hmm. doing all this stuff, calling me out. Mm-hmm. Uh, and if if some random person did the same thing, nothing, nothing, nothing yeah. would happen. Dude, honestly, you changed my mind. You changed my mind with how you just said that. I would go rich and not famous. And if you're rich, you don't have to worry. There's a lot of problems that come with worrying about money. You genuinely changed my mind because you're right. Especially, I'm thinking. I was thinking famous, not on our level. I'm talking next level. Yeah, like, We're Justin, like Justin Bieber, Justin, yeah. Justin Bieber, Drake. That's too much. When they're going out, they can't. They, they can't, can't they meet can't. someone oh. that doesn't know them. Mm-hmm. Like you got to think. They meet someone. They're like, hey, I'm Justin Bieber. They introduce themselves. Everyone already knows you. Everyone already has preconceived notions of who you are. And you can't even almost go anywhere without having security of some sort. Like Justin Bieber. You think he's just going to go walk around in the mall? He can't. He's going to get swarmed. Yeah. It's not safe for him. Bro, and even yeah. saying that, I've been out with you guys a couple times, like, on the road trip here and out, and at least, like, one person will come up and say hi. Yeah. yeah. When you asked me that question, I was thinking more of our level of, like, fame because I like the amount of people that comes up. To, like, it's cool when we're out. But yeah. you're, if you get to that next level, like, yeah, so President, I, yeah. Drake, like, biggest rappers, I can't even imagine walking around because you get sworn. But we, we go out and our fans are so dope, so nice. So what you're saying is no one else should subscribe to this podcast because we don't want to get any more famous, right? We like where we're at right now. I think the podcast has to match where we are at IBP. So we got to get to 4.17 million subscribers okay. on the pod. Okay, okay. Because right now we're we're still we're we're not rich or famous on the pod. We're neither. You ever think about? Because we have no sponsors yet. Being a girl, being an attractive girl, is kind of like being famous. Have you ever thought about that? That's true. Because everyone's oh. Because everybody's like yo. Like people would be trying to use you when mm-hmm. you're famous or if you're rich even. It'd be kind of people trying to use you. You don't know what their intentions are. You get invited places. You get stuff for free. It's kind of like if you're a girl, that'd be happening to them too. If you're pretty, you get invited stuff. You don't know whether someone just wants you for the wrong reasons. Mm-hmm. Kind of, it is kind of the think, same. I think about that sometimes. Not that I'm a girl, but I, don't I just know. be thinking yeah. about it sometimes. Know. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? He, he's just yeah. thinking about girls a lot. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Bro, yeah. no. Ever since we talked. <laughs> Or he still has a little look at his blush. He's All like, right, guys. Yo, yeah, okay, okay, I, yeah, 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 yeah. I think I'm going to wrap up this episode. <laughs> episode number two of the It Is What It Is podcast before they pressure me into saying anything I don't want to say. <laughs> Yo, guys, listen again. The support you guys are giving us is absolutely insane. insane. And especially for me, all the positivity, all the comments, all the little things that you guys are saying about me really pushes me to do my best. So I really appreciate that. And it means a lot to me. So, And let's- if you're at the end and you're watching this still, let's get another round in the comments of Let's Go BG. I was about to say the same thing. Let's, let's Go, go BG. Because if you're watching to the end right now, that's how we know you're a real one. Because if you're watching to the end... You're a real one, yo, yo, bro. Not, you watch this whole yo, thing? not even. Don't even co- comment. Let's go, VG, but put a little X too. You know, so we know. We know. Oh, oh like so times, times two. Times two you yeah, know? You a know little times two at the end. Okay, okay. Okay, so let's go, BG times two. Comment it down below. Thank you guys for watching. Number one podcast in the world. We will be back. We're trying to get a guest on for you next episode while we're out here in Texas. Subscribe if you're not subscribed. Check us out on Spotify. And it is what it is, boys. Woo! Is that Woo! This? Hot, hot, hot. Watch out for those rats in your cabinet. Oh, my. There's one over there. No.